I love the story of Elisha and Elijah, where Elisha asked for a double portion of God's Spirit from his master Elijah. He got what he asked for. For one minute Elisha had nothing, and the next minute he had miracles on a regular basis for the rest of his life. Even when he died, his bones still had the power to raise the dead. One of the reasons why Elisha qualified for this wonderful blessing was because he was a faithful servant to Elijah. Having a servant's heart always catches God's attention, but the thing that set him apart from others was his expectancy and perseverance. He was expecting to receive this blessing and wouldn't take no for an answer. Look at the story in 2 Kings 2, 1-13. Many of God's children have a servant's heart, but they are not expecting to receive special blessings from God as Elisha did. You need to believe that there is such a blessing available for you. If you don't see it, then you won't ask for it, and the Bible says that we have not because we ask not, in James 4, 2-3. So many of God's children live far below their potential because the enemy has blinded them to what is theirs in Christ. I love what it says in Romans eight seventeen. Now if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings, in order that we may also share in his glory. In the Living Bible it says, And since we are his children, we will share his treasures, for all God gives to his Son Jesus is now ours too. But if we are to share his glory, we must also share in his suffering. Are you experiencing this level of blessing in Christ? If not, then maybe it's because you don't see it as being yours, and so you're not asking for it. Remember the children of Israel were given Canaan land, but they still had to go and fight for it. The kingdom of God suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. Matthew 11:12. Elisha saw the blessing on Elijah's life and believed he could have it too. So it is for us, for all that has been given to Jesus, the true Elijah, has been given to us too. Jesus said in John 14:12 that the works that he did shall we do also, and even greater works than these shall we do. Elisha was expecting something to happen as they traveled on their way together, and he eventually received the double portion that he sought for. The word expectant reminds me of a mother expecting a baby. So often the baby doesn't come exactly when she expects it to be. In those final days of pregnancy, the mother is asking, Is it today? Sometimes the baby comes at the most inconvenient times, so you just have to be ready. Look at these times in the Bible when God visited expectant people. On the day of Pentecost, the Spirit came at 9 a.m. Cornelius had the angel come to him in a vision at 11 a.m. Paul had a bright light and a voice from heaven at 12 noon. Peter had a vision that changed everything for him at lunchtime as well. Daniel had an angel come to him at the time of the evening sacrifice. Adam had God walk with him in the cool of the evening. Paul and Silas had a divine intervention in prison at midnight, and Solomon had God speak to him in a dream in the middle of the night. Your day of visitation could be at any time, so keep believing and keep your faith high. Remember that being expectant isn't comfortable. I have found that God enlarges us in stressful times if we surrender our will to His. Hear me when I call, O God of my righteousness. You have enlarged me when I was in distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. Psalm 4, 1. Ask any pregnant woman who longs to be free from the burden she is carrying. It's hard when you have to pick yourself up and keep going when what you're wanting to happen didn't happen when expected. God knows what he is doing and you just have to trust him. I'm reminded of an illustration I heard once of how our trials are like those ovens that have a glass front. Sometimes we feel like God has put us into his oven and it's hot and restrictive in there. We're in the fiery furnace of trial, and it seems like he has forgotten us. After a long time, we look through the glass and see Jesus walking into the room. Praise God, it's time to get out of here. He comes up to the glass, looks in, and then says, He's not ready yet, and walks away. Do you ever feel like that? This place is also called the pit. The pit is the place of prophets in training. And it's hard being there. Jesus is faithful and he keeps all his promises he made to you. He will never let you be tempted above what you are able and gives us the ability to endure. 
And God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide you with a way that you can endure it. 1 Corinthians 10.13 Let us be like Elisha and keep our faith level high. You have come so far. Don't turn back now. It's possible for God to turn your life around, and you'll never be the same way you were before. Look at how Joseph was suddenly released from prison and never went back to jail again. He was always expectant of his dream being fulfilled, but he didn't know what day his release would be. Be like Elisha, who wouldn't leave Elijah's side until he got the double portion that he had desired. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. For you have need of patience, that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that will come will come, and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith, that if any man draws back, my soul will have no pleasure in him. Hebrews 10, 36-38